was very early in my corporate career when I was a training manager in a global bank. I was considered very diligent in the way I used to work. I used to get regular pay hikes. I used to get regular good ratings and even awards. But one thing was missing. I was not getting promoted. And I was very, very frustrated. That why is that happening? Despite being so competent, why am I not getting promoted? So I went to meet my manager. I said that why am I not getting promoted? He said, Chitin, you lack executive presence. I said, executive presence? What the heck is executive presence? He said, your clients, everybody with whom you work, they really admire your work. However, they hardly notice your presence. They hardly remember you. And I started thinking that, yes, that is so true. Because I was a very reserved person by nature. Whenever I go for a meeting, I'll make a presentation, close my laptop, come back. Will not strike any informal conversation. I never made any attempt to build any trust-based relationship, any sustainable relationship, any rapport. I was feeling miserable. I started thinking that I am good for nothing. I will never be able to grow in my career because I do not have a powerful executive presence. And somehow this word executive presence stayed with me. And there onwards started my journey to hone my executive presence. I went through several qualitative trainings. I got coached from the best of the best mentors and coaches throughout the world. And I became very, very passionate about this subject of executive presence. Over a period of time, I observed that it was not just me. There were several other senior leaders, equally competent, very, very good in what they used to do, but they were not getting promoted, they were stagnated. And it is not just the corporate leaders several founders, great ideas, great team, great product, but not able to scale up. So I realized, I took a resolve that I really need to support these leaders, step up their executive presence. I co-founded two organizations in the space of leadership development and executive coaching. And from last 10 years, I've been professionally coaching a lot of senior leaders to help them become more successful and more importantly, fulfilled in their career. So the question is, what is executive presence? Friends, executive presence has the word presence in it, which means being present, which means when your presence is inspiring for your team, which means when your presence is generating trust and confidence in your internal and external clients, when your presence is calming and soothing, charismatic. So friends, executive presence is the impact that a leader creates in its environment, in their ecosystem, when they rediscover that innate greatness within. So how to really work on creating a powerful executive presence? So in last several years in my journey, to really hone my executive presence and that of my clients with whom I work. I realized that there are three insights which I have had in this journey. A powerful executive presence is a combination of right skill set, right mindset, and a powerful being. And all these insights that I have had in several years, I observed that they were coming from the myths that I have had, which got busted over the years. So the first insight that I would like to talk about is the skill set. You know, the myth I had about skill set was, you know, if I have to grow, only thing that will matter is my technical competence, nothing else. That was a myth I had. And a lot of people have that myth. Yes, this is true. Technical competence is important up to middle management, but from middle management journey to be a CXO, friends, technical competence play minimal role. What is very, very important is people skill or soft skill. In fact, there was a research that was done by Harvard Business School, Stanford Business School and Carnegie Foundation. And it shared 
that 85% of the job success of a leader comes from their people or soft skills. And only 15%, yes, you heard it right, only 15% of job success comes from technical skills. But people do not accept because in our culture, we right from our childhood, we focus a lot on gaining knowledge, gaining technical competence. It's very difficult for us to really let go of that thought. So I had an opportunity to work with a senior leader. He was a vice president in a global organization. And he was stuck at a vice president level for eight years, was getting frustrated. Highly respected in the organization, very competent, but not getting promoted. So in our conversations, I, we had a chat and I insisted that why don't you take a 360 degree feedback from everybody whom you work with. He said, feedback? Why should I take feedback? I'm good at what I do. Why should I ask for feedback? On my insistence, he still went ahead. Results were shocking. A lot of leaders expressed that they are unable to work with him because he was very, very blunt in his communication. He was very straightforward and sometimes he was also hurting and this was a blind spot for him. He got very upset. In fact, there was one person who actually labeled him as a wolf, his communication style. Over a period of time in our conversation, he came to terms with it, consciously started changing his communication style from an aggressive communication style to a more relaxed communication style, a polite communication style. And very soon, from a wolf, he changed his communication style to an elephant. Elegant, yet powerful. And within a year's time, he got promoted. So the second insight I had was in the space of uh, right mindset. And here the myth was, why should I, I talk about my work? Let my work speak for itself. Why should I blow my own trumpet? Why should I do the self-bragging? And this is something very, very common amongst a lot of leaders. And what happens is because we are hesitant to talk about our good work, we end up losing a lot of opportunities. And a lot of leaders experience that I included. We, I experienced this challenge. So what I observed that this is coming from our childhood, the way we are brought up as a child. Our parents, our teachers, you know, even though we want our kids to really do very well and have good skills, but the moment they start talking about their accomplishments, they start talking about their strength, we don't like it. And that's when we develop a mindset as a child that we should not really talk about ourselves. So we have come up with a very simple grid to understand this in the context of executive presence. So if you see on the x-axis, it's our ability and comfort to project what we are good at. And on the y-axis is the extent to which we have grown in our life internally. So imagine if the internal growth is substantial, but we are not comfortable in talking about it. We call it as mild presence. I had that. On the other hand, if the internal growth is very less, but the external projection is very high, that is self-bragging. We call it as loud presence. And of course, if the internal growth is also very high, external projection is also a person is comfortable with that, that leads to a powerful executive presence, friends. So a powerful executive presence is an outcome of a comfort of a person to talk about their competence. So competence is important. But it's also important that we are able to convey about that competence to the whole world without any guilt. Believe me, great leaders are never hesitant to talk about their great work to the world. So that was the second insight. Third insight is in the space of powerful being. That's the third insight. And the myth was, I am not good enough. And believe me, this is one of the most common myth which people have. People have great skills, very positive attitude, but they have this belief system that I'm really not good enough. And that is one of the biggest reasons for leaders to get stagnated. Michelangelo was a great sculptor, besides being a great painter. So once he was creating a statue, and a passerby was going, and he actually saw, and he said, wow, Michael, what a beautiful statue you are creating. 
Michael said that I am not creating that statue. In that block of stone, the statue already exists. I am just chipping away the useless stones. Similarly, every human being is also like a block of stone with greatness inside them, which has to be just carved out. Friends, those leaders who are able to discover their innate greatness within, they are able to develop a very, very powerful executive presence. You too have that innate greatness within you. You just need to take out some time to really work on that and rediscover and hone that. So, these three insights, friends, have had a great impact on me and it has been a game changer for me and all my clients. Shri Bhagwan, who is the founder of Oneness Movement says, awareness doesn't lead to freedom. Awareness itself is freedom. So imagine you are in a closed room, a dark room, which is closed and dark for the last 20 years. And if someone opens a window, you know, it won't take 20 years for the room to get illuminated. The illumination will happen then and there. So similarly, the moment you have those deeper insights about you, the transformation journey to develop a powerful executive presence will happen very fast. It's not very slow. So friends, if those of you who too are struggling and stagnating in a particular career or a business, and if you want to really move to the next level, I would like to ask three questions to you. You don't have to answer these questions now. Please take a note of it. And after this talk, please write down the answer. The first question is in the space of skill set. And that is, in what areas do you need to sharpen your people skills or soft skills? Question number two is in the space of mindset. And the question is, how you can more effective convey about your great work to the whole world and question number three is in the space of being and the question is what is the element of greatness within you which you are yet to discover thank you so much